Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. This is going to be a very quick video on how to get started streaming using Stream Elements rather than something like Streamlabs OBS. Just because in my personal opinion, I think Stream Elements has some different assets and things to offer that other competitors don't, and this is pretty much why I personally use Stream Elements whenever I stream. But we'll go ahead and go over some of those advantages as we progress throughout the video. Um, but to go ahead and get started, just go ahead and navigate to your favorite uh, browser and then go to StreamElements.com. After you go to StreamElements.com, you're just going to go ahead and hit sign in with or connect with, sign in, however you want to say it, with your favorite platform. Mine's going to be Twitch. And I already have it set to remember this computer, so it's not going to ask me to enter an authorization token or anything. Since it's probably your first time signing into Stream Elements, it might have you create an account, or actually it'll just have you sign in, but it'll probably have you enter an authorization token that texts you. Just go ahead and enter that authorization token, and then it'll uh, be, you'll see this dashboard just like I see right now. And then after you go ahead and get on this dashboard, go ahead and look down to the left and hit OBS Live. And this is where essentially you're going to download the software and add-ins that enable Stream Elements to work directly with the software while you're streaming so that everything works seamlessly. Um, so don't think if you already have OBS that you don't need to download this because this essentially is just, a, just OBS with some add-ons. Because you're going to want to hit download anyway, so let's go ahead and hit download because one of two things is going to happen. If you already have OBS, it's just going to prompt you to download the add-ons which will integrate seamlessly with your already installed version of OBS. If you don't already have OBS downloaded, it's going to prompt you to download both, and then everything will integrate seamlessly again. So regardless, just go ahead and hit download, and it'll take you to this. Go ahead and hit download, and it'll download the software for you. So just go ahead and pause the video, let it download, and then open it in the background so that we can proceed with the rest of the video. So after you get this downloaded, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take advantage of one of the things that I think Stream Elements has to offer that other streaming platforms don't, and that is the full online, pretty much theme gallery or the integrations because everything is done online so let me go ahead and show you so let's go ahead and head over to the themes gallery and just like Streamlabs OBS they have a plethora of themes that you can choose through to get things going but the really cool part is all that stuff is managed online rather than being managed in OB or managed directly within that platform so it takes a little bit of um, strain down in your machine as well as in my personal opinion it just looks a lot cleaner and it's easier to manage because you only have one source as opposed to a bunch so let's just go ahead and show you what I mean. So let's just say we want to pick one of these. Um, I'll just go ahead and go with the gray. And in terms of like super theme, themes, alerts, or widgets, you can go through and find like an individual theme for each thing that you want. So like this would be, for instance, if you want to go through and find an in-game theme, a BRB, a starting soon, etc. And then same thing for alerts and widgets. But in my opinion, the super theme's the best, especially for just getting started just because it has all that stuff integrated. So as you see, if you hit create on one of the ones that you can go through and find, it'll show you a preview. And this one has an in-game theme and intermission, a stream starting with a countdown. And all these widgets and things are built in. Per so like you don't have to do anything. You don't have to like go through and find and pick everything together. It's all just built in. So I personally recommend if you're kind of new to streaming and just really don't want to deal with the hassle of creating everything right off the bat, just find one of these super themes and it'll get you going as well as all the of all these alerts and kind of uh, little widgets that show like your latest tip and everything that'll pull directly from the API of the platform that you chose so like Twitch Mixer YouTube etc and it'll just go ahead and populate accordingly so after you find one that you want just go ahead and name it so we're just gonna name this gray test v1 and hit create my overlay and then now you're gonna see it kind of this shows you a bunch of different links you might be saying what do I do with these so now is where you're going to open up OBS if you have it already and you're going to go down here um, to this. Well, first we're going to go and sign you into OBS, right? So let's go ahead and hit file, settings, stream, and then service. Find the service that you want to use to stream, whether it be Twitch, Mixer, Facebook Live, Restream, etc. You can hit show all. Me personally, I'm going to hit Twitch. I'm already signed into it. Um, it'll just have you sign into your account essentially. I don't know if it, all of them are connected like this, but Twitch, you don't have to connect uh, or type in the stream key anymore. It just automatically pulls it from Twitch's API. If you have to type in the stream key, just Google essentially where to find that stream key on your desired platform, type in that stream key or copy and paste it, and then you'll be connected perfectly. So after you get connected, um, and sorry there, that's gonna be there for a second. 
So after you go ahead and get connected, just go ahead and go down to the left and just hit add new scene. And then I'm just going to name this gray test v1, hit enter. And then now my face is going to disappear for a second just because um, you can just see essentially what I'm seeing. And so now what you're going to do is once this is your scene, go ahead and just hit add a source, hit browser source. And then I'm just going to name this in game, hit add, and now it's going to ask for a URL which is what essentially we just got from stream elements, right? So now what you're gonna do is, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a source real quick just so that you can see what I'm doing. So display capture, a display, and let's make it my third monitor. Yeah, now you can see what I'm doing again. And so these are all the different th scenes that we just had. So you see it says gray area in game. You're just gonna copy that to your clipboard and then on this, we used a browser source, remember? And now you're just gonna go ahead and paste that link that we just copied in there. You're gonna change the resolution to the resolution of your monitor. Mine is gonna be 1920 by 1080. And then you're gonna hit okay. And then all of those things, if you move it accordingly, are going to populate like we just saw on that screen. Everything is in there. So now instead of having different layers of a webcam, um, webcam border, different images for each one of these. Um, it's just all going to be built in to that, built into that online instance via this link, which is super cool in my opinion. And so now we're going to back, go back to the recording screen so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing, get things switched back over. There we go. And then you're just going to do that for each one of these. You're just going to go back to OBS. You're going to hit add a new scene hit browser source and you're just going to paste this in there this makes it that you name things accordingly just so that it's easier to find out essentially which one you're linking to which one in case you want to change some things but that's pretty much all there is to it in terms of getting that stuff linked then all your alerts and widgets and everything are linked directly through this web application so now say you want to essentially change something about one of those scenes you don't like the position or you want to change the alert that has to do with it all you have to do is go over here to my overlays all these overlays that you just downloaded are going to be down here somewhere. Um, go ahead and just hit go to overlay editor on the one that you want to change. And then everything is going to be right here. So you can move stuff around um, either by doing it via the layers tab or by just shifting stuff around by dragging and dropping it. And then as soon as you hit save, it'll automatically update that instance. Whether you're already streaming or recording, it's just automatically going to change it. It really doesn't matter. Um, so the number one thing that people are going to want to know how to change is going to be their alerts, right? So you can either click on alert box 22, find the alert box over here. It might not be named alert box 22 for you, or you can just click on alert box, which is what I recommend doing. And then it's going to have all your different alerts right here. So say you want to change your follower alert, right? Just hit settings. And then right here is where you can change all of those different um, variables. You can hit change image, find something on your computer if you have something like a GIF. Um, and then you can change the alert that pops up whenever that happens. You can change the alert duration. You can change the text to speech. You can change literally anything you want about that. And that's all right here because the alert box is right here. You can change the position of the alert box. As soon as you hit save, it's automatically going to update. And it's super cool. There's really nothing else you have to do, which is super, super nice. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to show you is that um, right off the bat, whenever you do this, I thought that you essentially had to go to each different scene, so in-game, BRB, stream starting, etc., and you had to redo this for each one, which was a super big pain. But actually, you don't have to. If you just find the thing that you want to change, so say alert box, and then you just hit this red duplicate widget, and then hit other overlays. If you have named everything properly with like a good nomenclature or naming convention, you can automatically find which ones you want to change it to. And then you just click in each checkbox you want to change it to and hit submit. And now it's changed it to all of them, which is super cool. So like say you've went through and changed all the follow alerts. You don't want to do that all again, right? Because it's a tedious process. Who hit duplicate widget, other overlays, and just check the boxes and it'll automatically transfer this to the other ones. The only thing is sometimes it stacks them for some reason. So make sure that you name this something appropriately go into the other ones and then just delete the old instance. So like say you name this one alert box 23 
and then you copy it to the other overlays. The other the other overlays might still have um, alert box 21 in them or whatever, right? So you just have to delete that one from the other ones. Otherwise, you might have like some double alerts going on, which can be super annoying, especially like if you're listening back to them via testing and th stuff like that. Um, so the next thing I want to show you how to do is to just get some good OBS settings going, right? So like essentially, what do you need to do in order to stream properly and have a good stream? Um, so we'll just hit save and then exit. And then we're gonna go ahead and go back over to OBS. And so now with OBS, the thing that you can actually see here is you're gonna go up to file and settings and then we're going to go to, let's go to output. So there's going to be a couple different things that I really can't change since I'm already recording slash streaming right now. But um, the main thing that like really helps me out at least is if you just go to any browser and then just type in like Twitch or whatever platform you're using, um, bitrate settings or bitrate guide. We'll see if that works better. Yeah, so then... I always use NVENC specs rather than the X264 just because NVENC is encoding through your graphics card instead of your processor. And so that just makes things a little easier on your machine, especially if you are have a one PC setup or lower end specs like I do right now. And then you can just pretty much follow the settings exactly how you want. So like if you want to stream in this, you need to put this. If you want to stream in this, then you need to put these settings, right? So for me personally, Right now, I'm just streaming a console game that really isn't that quick moving, so I just use NVENC, of course, and then I just stream at 3000 bit rate like it recommend. Um, put a keyframe interval in there, I believe it said of two. Yeah, interval of two, which I actually forgot to do. Preset quality profile high, GPU zero, max B frames two. Literally just hit apply, and then you're good to go. Um, and then just adjust those settings accordingly to how you want to play, right? And according to like how you want to stream, what you want your viewers to see. Um, and then the next thing that you want to change is video. So base canvas resolution, this is just going to be anything, or this is just going to be what your monitor's resolution is. So you have a 1080p monitor, put this 1080p. Outscaled resolution is going to be what was on that website. So like if you want to stream in 1080p to your viewers, have it be 1080p. If you want it to be 30 um, mm -hmm. If you want it to be 720p, 30 FPS, change that accordingly. But the number one thing is just keep downscale filter on Lance Coast. Audio, keep this on 44.1, and then just for desktop audio and mic for your first ones, leave it on default if you only have one, but I have multiple things plugged in, so I had to make sure that I pretty much specified which ones I wanted and why. Um, and that's pretty much it. You're ready to start streaming now. Um, there really isn't much else to it. Um, stream elements is super cool in my opinion. Everything is just right in house, and if you ever needed to essentially like make a new overlay or like you got a new one from the themes gallery, everything's right there for you, and then you can just copy everything over like I showed you with that duplicate widgets button. Um, the only other thing that maybe you want to do is go through here and just see if there's anything that you want to add. So like, I'm not gonna click on it because then it'll show like my PayPal account info and stuff. But like if you want to get donations, just hit tipping settings and then it'll have you sign in with your PayPal account and then it will um, provide you with the link that you need to put on your Twitch channel. So like if you navigate to your Twitch channel, go to channel, it'll provide you with a link that people can use to donate to you. Just hit edit panels, make a donation panel with any image that you have on your computer and just put Im in the image links to text box, just paste that link that they give you. That's really all there is to it. There isn't much to it. Um, and then a really another cool thing about it, so this is really only gonna be pertinent like if you've had an issue with it or if you think you're gonna have an issue with it, just to be cautious. SE Pay, which is known as Stream Elements Pay, it can go directly through your bank account rather than PayPal and some people have an issue with like people making large donations and then PayPal literally will just give them that money back if they request it back like for, I didn't mean to send it or however you wanna say it. So some people have a big issue with that. If you use Stream Elements Pay, um, they pretty much can't do that. 
is the big thing about it. Like it's locked through them. So after they make the donation, there is no refund on it regardless. Like it doesn't matter at that point. And then they just have a bunch of different things. Like they have chat commands that you can add. They have different modules. They have user management, like where you can add mods and everything. Uh, custom commands, default commands, but that's pretty much all there is to it. And then within OBS as well, um, I forgot to kind of show you. The add-ons are essentially going to be the activity feed as well as the stream webcam or the stream chat that you can see after that. And then everything's just right here, like I mentioned. So, I mean, now instead of literally having a lineup of like 10 to 15 different instances of sources for like images for all those different things like bits, cheers, etc. It's all just within the online platform now. So this is going to take up a lot more take up a lot less resources on your computer while you're streaming and really just one last tip that I have to offer if you're having any trouble streaming in terms of like um, you're dropping a lot of frames etc number one try and update your network drivers on your computer um, just Google how to do it with Windows 10 or whatever operating system you're using Mac or Linux update your network drivers that worked for me personally or another thing that actually works for me is if you find if you find the um, stream, the OBS, um, I can't even think of it, the OBS widget or icon on your desktop and just right click it and hit run as administrator, that are actually prioritize OBS above games on your computer, which I mean, you think, why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, Windows, what they're doing exactly is like, it's a, it's Microsoft, right? So like they want your game to come first. So whenever you start a game, it's going to prioritize that game above everything else. But if you have a lower end PC like I do, that just kind of sometimes tanks your stream and kind of delineates the purpose of even doing so. But if you run it as administrator, that'll prioritize stream, uh, stream or OBS above anything else so that you don't drop frames and everything like that. So just try and run it as administrator if you're having problems too. And then if you have any problems whatsoever, just drop a comment down below in this video. If you want to see how to do anything else, Drop a comment. I'll make another video on it. I'll just message you back personally, answer the comment, something like that. But that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Um, and now my small call to action. I don't normally try to do these, but please like this video. Please subscribe. It helps me out. And please go to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash abanashi. And that's it, guys. Just go ahead and follow it. And you can join in the streams to have some fun. All right, guys. That's going to be it for this one. Peace.